Mike, thank you. Well, we are indeed starting to see signs of spring here in Chicago. But did you know that if you listen closely, you can hear spring in the air? Yeah, the folks over at the shed know that springtime means love time <laughs> for amphibians. <laughs> Joining us right now to tell us a little bit more about this is Dr. Melissa Youngquist of the Shed Aquarium. Thanks for coming on this morning. This is fun. Yeah, I'm so happy to be here and talk about our froggies. <laughs> so, you know, we're guessing there are times when maybe we'll walk through the forest or the woods and we need to pay attention to this chorus of amphibians going on and, and apparently they're looking for their mates. I don't even know what that's supposed to sound like. Maybe you can describe it for us. <laughs> yeah, well, for me, it sounds like joy. Um, it's just, it's the sign that spring is finally here. And the frogs that are most commonly calling right now in Chicago are the chorus frogs, which you saw in that photo. And if you can imagine, yeah, that sound right there. Um, imagine like running your finger along a comb. Um, that's the sound that one male calls. And if you're sitting by a pond out in the forest preserves during the daytime, you might hear, you know, five to 10 frogs calling. But if you happen to go camping or you have a pond in your property and you're out at night, hundreds of males calling gets quite deafening. It's like being at a rock concert. You <laughs> want some ear protection out there. <laughs> I, I, I love this topic. I, Anita and I both live in the Western Burbs. I, I can't speak for Anita, but I've seen more than my share of turtles out there. But can you give our audience a little lesson in the amphibians that are common here in our area and why they are so important to our ecosystem? Yeah, of course. So it's surprising to me, but Chicago has around 13 species of amphibians. That's frogs, toads, and salamanders in Cook County. And so our forest preserves are really important um, for maintaining these healthy amphibian populations. And so in ponds that we study, these small ephemeral ponds, they dry up every year. We're getting things like the chorus frogs, American toads, blue spotted salamanders, tree frogs are gonna come throughout the year. That's so And then cool. in more permanent ponds, like, like a lake, you might get bullfrogs and green frogs. Now we understand that you've got a team of volunteers that work with you, help you out, even in the dead of winter. I mean, what can you see and what kind of work can you do in the dead of winter? Yeah, so these ponds that we're restoring um, are actually crowded out by a bunch of invasive buckthorn, and that harms the whole pond ecosystem. And so when the animals are hibernating and they're safe underground, that's the best time to get volunteers out to remove these invasive buckthorn plants. Um, so that the spring comes, the frogs have good, healthy habitat. What's the biggest threat? Uh, is it their natural predators or is it mankind? Yeah, so unfortunately the biggest threat to um, frogs and these small pools is habitat destruction. And so we're working with the forest preserves um, to really try and revitalize these ponds that we have left. Mm. Can anybody do that volunteer work, by the way? And if they want to do it, where do they go? Absolutely. We are always looking for volunteers to join us on the Shed Aquarium Action Days to get out into the woods and the lakefront to help clean up our habitat. And so anybody who's interested can come to the Shed website and sign up for an action day. And settle an age old myth for us, doctor. If you hold a toad in your hand, will you in fact get a wart? <laughs> you will not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there goes that argument, mom and dad telling the kid not to touch the thing. Uh, hey, thank you so much, doctor. We do appreciate you coming on this morning, talking about this fun yeah, stuff. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, that was fun. Thank yeah. you.